Hey, 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 you guys. Welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Welcome. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Let me know that you're on. I would love to say hello to you. We're going to get started fairly quickly so that I can uh, respect your time and give you time to do what you need to do and spend time with your family because that is the number one priority is that we make sure we give our family what they need. You guys, last week we talked about rebuilding. It was time to rebuild this because so many times, you know, things just don't work out no matter how hard we try. And then sometimes God allows things to kind of fall apart a little bit so that you can do things differently, so that you can do things better than what you did the last time. So that's what we talked about last week. I hope that encouraged you to think about your life and think about if it's where you want it to be, what you can do to change it, what you can do to improve it. So I pray that you got some encouragement out of that. This week, we want to talk about a little word called doubt. Doubt is something that all of us experience at one point in time or another. It's human. You know, God knows that that we have weaknesses and doubt is one of those things. And doubt, what does doubt mean and why it matters in your life? Doubt is a feeling of just being uncertain, a lack of conviction, a uh, just something that just says, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about doing that. You know, a lack of self-confidence. That's what that doubt is. And doubt has a way of stopping us from taking chances. It stops us from making necessary changes sometimes because we have a fear of the unknown. And it stops us from moving forward sometimes. You know, we talk about in the past about how it's easy to get comfortable with the familiar. I am very guilty of that. Uh, being a little bit nervous about stepping outside the box sometimes or going into arena, an arena that I haven't been trained for or people are more intimidating uh, than what I'm used to. But God wants you to step out there. God wants you to be bold. God wants you to understand that it doesn't matter who's in the room. You're just as important. You're just as qualified. You're just as talented and as gifted as they are. And then doubt stops us from reaching our full potential. Because there are some things that God may want you to do, but simply because you're afraid, you won't move forward. No matter what God does to open the door. Doubt keeps keeps us surrounded in fear. Doubt is a shadow. Doubt is one of those things that happens because you worry about something that hasn't even happened. That's why it's so closely related to fear. And it makes you worry. And even though some things may have gone wrong in the past because of your past, it makes you doubt things in your future and you're fearful because you're afraid of making that same mistake and you remember how bad it hurt the last time, this, that, and the other. But we limit ourselves. We put ourselves in a box when we believe that just because something didn't work out last time, we can't believe that it won't work out next time. You have got to get that kind of mindset out of your head or you'll never, you'll never enjoy life. And there's different types of doubt that most of us have to deal with. The biggest one, the hardest one is self-doubt. When you doubt yourself, when you doubt your self-worth, when you doubt your own abilities, when you get excited about something and then you talk yourself out of it. That is the hardest one for most of us to deal with because the voices in your head is the enemy and it's your thoughts of how you feel about yourself. So that's why it's so important that you learn to manage your doubt because you're going to have doubt sometimes there's no way to get rid of it all together but you need to be able to keep it at a minimum even though you doubt if there's something you doubt figure it out what it is specifically you're concerned about do your research get all the information that you need so that you can now move forward don't let doubt stop you let doubt make you want to do a little bit more research do a little bit more investigating before you step out there and then there's a doubt that we have in other people. Sometimes people make you doubt them because they've let you down before. 
It's hard for me to trust somebody that I trusted once and they let me down or I trusted several times and for the most part, they keep letting you down. So those things make you doubt that person and unfortunately, because of what other people have done to you, it makes you doubt other people as well that haven't done anything wrong. And then there's doubt about God and doubt about your future and his plans for your future. A lot of us deal with that, especially with all the stuff going on in the world is scary. You know, the wars and and all the uproar and, and unrest that's going on right now and and just the inflation and just things of that nature. Jobs are acting funny. You know, you just don't really know. And that puts doubt in your heart and that doubt eventually leads to fear and anxiety. And then the last doubt is doubt about your healing. You know, so many times we get a bad report from the doctor and we take that and we run with it. We don't, we don't immediately go to God. We immediately absorb what else is, whatever's been said to us, whatever's been told to us. And we look at that thing and we focus on that thing instead of remembering what God said in his word about by his stripes, by Jesus stripes, we are healed. So a lot of times it's hard to believe that depending on what's going on with you because we're human. We're human. And I believe that self-doubt has really plagued most of us. You know, some people were able to get past it, but some people are still in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they still don't have the confidence that they need to live the kind of life that they wanted to live, to be excited about their future. So let's talk about some tips that can help you stop doubting yourself so much. The first tip is find validation from within. Stop always looking for people to validate you and say that you're important and make you feel loved. You know, you have got to love yourself. You have got to learn how to cheer for yourself and pat your own self on the back sometime because when you depend on that from other people, you set yourself up for heartache and disappointment because people will not always congratulate you. People will not always be happy for you. And you've got to learn how to maneuver through life without that. you got to stop clinging on to people hoping that they'll make you feel valuable. You have got to find the value within. Therefore, if you got to do things by yourself, if you have to be out of a relationship for a while, if you have to be single for a while, that you can still enjoy your life. You have got to find validation from within. Okay. Number two, learn to journal. I've talked about this before. Write down how you feel and why you feel the way you feel. A lot of times when you put those things before you, it makes more sense to you and you'll start thinking, you know what? This happened to me when I was a little girl. This is why I don't love myself the way I need to love myself. This is why I've been blaming myself for this the whole time. But that's when you can get honest with yourself. That's when you can go to God and say, God, this is what I'm writing down. This is what I'm feeling on the inside. Help me with these feelings that I'm having. Help me to understand, you know, how, how, I'm, why I'm feeling like this and how to get past it. And then number three, remember your achieve, achievements. Remember what you've already done. Remember all the good stuff that you've done. You know, so many times we undersell ourselves. We underappreciate ourselves, you guys. Learn to remember those achievements, how you raise those kids all by yourself without their father, how you how you made a way out of no way, how you kept a roof over your children's head, how you went through school when when you didn't know how you were going to go through. You got to, got that degree uh, when you've gotten promotions on your jobs. You have to remember your achievements, not to brag about those things, not to throw those things in other people's faces, but just to help you understand you are valuable and to give you validation for yourself and make you understand that I don't have to doubt myself because when times got hard, I made it and I kept going. I persevered and those things will help encourage you. And number four goes along with this positive self-talk. 
What you say about yourself matters. What you say about yourself shows in how you dress, uh, how you walk, how you talk, how you act around people. Says a lot about what you're saying to yourself. So make sure that you're saying positive things about yourself because if you start saying those things, those things will start to show on the outside and other people will start noticing those things. You have got to believe in yourself when nobody else does. Five, daily affirmations. That's when you write these things down and say, you know what? I am blessed. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You know, write those things down and remind yourself of all the things that you can do, all the things that you are, all the things that God says that you are. And write those daily affirmations down, post them throughout your house so that you can remind yourself that you got this. You got this. Number six, practice self-compassion. Stop being so hard on yourself when you make a mistake. We all make mistakes, you guys. We're only human. And give yourself a break sometimes because sometimes we can be strong for so long and resist something for so long and then we have a weak moment. And then we just tear ourselves up simply because of one bad patch in our life. Don't do that to yourself. Allow yourself to be human. Dust yourself off. Get back up again and try it again. Number seven, be mindful of your language. The reason I say that is because God's word said you will have what you say. So be careful about saying, you know, all I have is bad luck. Every time I turn around, something bad has happened to me. I, if I didn't have bad luck, I didn't have, I wouldn't have any luck at all. You know, and uh, I can't seem to find a good man. I can't seem to get a decent man that'll take care of me, a decent man that'll treat me right. You are putting those things out in the atmosphere. So you have to. Be mindful of what you say. Don't put those things out there because you're going to get what you throw out there. So make sure that you're reminding yourself, I deserve X, Y, Z. I will have A, B, C. Put those things out there that you want to see happen in your life. Stop just mindfully talking and complaining and grumbling because you're going to have what you say. Number eight, this is a big one. Stop comparing yourself to other people. I can't say that enough. And I know that's so easy to do. I catch myself doing that and I have to snap myself out of it and be like, Karen, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Get back in your lane. That is not your lane over there. You have to talk to yourself like that. When you feel yourself getting out of there, looking at her, looking at him, oh, they have this, oh, they have that. That's for them. That's their portion. God has something else for you. And you have to remind yourself that what is for you will be for you. Don't worry about what somebody else got. Don't worry about how well somebody else is doing. What God has for you is just for you. And you got to believe that. And that will keep you from being jealous. And that will allow you to be able to congratulate people when they're doing well, when they've achieved something. You'll be able to do it and you'll do it from a pure heart when you truly believe that what God has for you is just for you. But you've got to get that in your spirit. Number nine, this is very important. Spend time with people who love you, who love you back. Everybody don't love you the way you love them. And stop giving out so much to people that give you nothing in return. They've shown you that they don't have love to give you. Stop giving them so much of your time. Give to people that's giving back to you that, that make you feel good and, and that make you feel better just because they've been around you, that encourage you, that uplift you, you know, that make you laugh. Spend more time with those type of people because that will increase your self-esteem. That'll help you stop doubting yourself because you deserve to have people who love you. You deserve to have people that can lift your head when you're having a bad day or send you an encouraging word or tell you that they love you without having a motive attached to it. You deserve that. So here's eight more tips I want to give you to overcome self-doubting because I really believe self-doubt is so strong in most of us. And I, I fight with it myself, you guys. Number one, 
I've learned to practice gratitude. I am so grateful for everything. You know, I wake up in the morning, y'all. You know, as soon as I roll over, I say, thank you, Lord. I don't even know what my day is going to be like. But I still say thank you, Lord, because he did not have to wake me up. He did not have to let that alarm clock go out. He did not let, have to let that light shine through my window and let me have another day. So practice gratitude. Little things that happen throughout the day. You know, you find $10. Thank you, Lord. You know, somebody says something nice about you. Thank you, Lord. You know, because those things don't have to happen. They're happening by the grace of God as a blessing from God. You know, those things that didn't happen. You know, you were able to avoid a wreck when a car came over into your lane. You better learn how to thank God, honey, because those were those angels looking out for you that you were able to react in the time that you needed to react. We have got to stop taking God for granted, you guys. We really do. You know, some of us, we wake up and it's like nothing. You know, we just doing our usual routine. We got an attitude. We nasty to people. You are disrespecting God when you do that because you are not even grateful for the present that is the day that he has allowed you to be here, allowed you to breathe his air and walk on his earth. So we've got to do better about having an attitude of gratitude because it will help take some of that self-doubt out of you. Because when you realize God don't make no mistakes and that God made you just the way that you are, you'll stop doubting yourself. You'll understand that your uniqueness is the beauty that's on the inside of you. And then you'll start to embrace that and stop looking at the negative things. Two, be your best supporter. If you believe in something, you make sure you're the one that's contributing into it. Make sure that you're the one that's putting in the hard work. Don't be sitting around waiting for other people to do stuff for you just because you had a bright idea. You be the first one to show that you believe in what you're talking about. You know, you have to learn how to support yourself even when there's nobody else there. And sometimes God will allow it to be like that where where friends are few, where support is few, just to see if you're sincere about what you're doing. Because when you're really sincere and when you're really trying to do a work for God, you realize if nobody comes around, if nobody shows up, I'm still going to do this because I'm doing this for God. It's not my my portion or my thing to worry about who shows up. My job is to do what I'm told to do and to be obedient to what God has asked me to do. And when you start thinking about things like that, you stop worrying about a crowd. You stop worrying about who likes your videos, who likes this, who comments on that. Those things become less important when you're doing it for the right reason. So you have to be your own supporter. Number three, like I said earlier, embrace your uniqueness. Quit trying to be like everybody everybody else. Quit trying to look like everybody else. Quit trying to have what everybody else has. Quit trying to act like everybody else. Be yourself. Nobody can be a better version of you than you. So just be yourself. Be your best you. Nobody can imitate that. I don't care how much they try to copy you. Nobody can take your shine, sweetie, if you're being yourself and you're being authentic. There is not a thing another woman can take from you. And there is not a thing another man can take from you. Because when you're true to yourself, that's between you and God. That's when things are lining up in the spirit, the physical, all of that. And nobody can take that away from you. That's a gift from God. And then number four, address the things that you doubt about yourself. Quit acting like, you know, you got it all together. Quit fronting like you don't have any doubts. Address whatever it is that you doubt about yourself and see what you can do to improve that. See if it's those voices from when you were younger where people were telling you what you couldn't do and how you weren't smart enough, how you weren't pretty enough, you know, how you didn't have the right shape, your skin was too dark, all of that. See if it's some of those things that are making you doubt yourself even today and address those things. Cry those things out. Talk to God and say, God, help me to erase those bad memories when people made me feel bad about myself. They told me I wasn't good enough. They they told me, you know, I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve that. 
you have to address those self-doubts, those voices that keep talking to you whenever you want to try to do something and then you back off of it because you feel like maybe that's for somebody else to do that you're not qualified to do this and that. God is the one that qualifies you. He qualifies you for whatever it is he wants you to do in your life. It doesn't have to be through a college degree. If God chooses for you to have a certain purpose, he's going to give you what you need. Whether you have to go to school or not, or whether you have to go through all this training or not, that's going to be up to God. But you have got to shake whatever is making you doubt yourself. And just understand that if God put it in your heart to do it, he's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. And if it's really something that you can't seem to shake off, get with a therapist and tell them those things about yourself, those things that are concerning you, that you're worried about why you feel the way you feel about yourself. Sometimes you just need to get those things out and the therapist can help you do the work to try to figure out ways to turn that thing around. Number five. Get an outlet for your emotions. You know, I'm learning, I guess as I'm getting a little bit older, to quit sugarcoating things. Quit saying what people want you to say just to keep from hurting their feelings. Quit agreeing with people just because you don't want to upset somebody. We have got to find an outlet for our emotions. And there's nothing better than to say what you need to say. Because you can say anything without making a scene and without acting a fool. You can let somebody know that they're disrespecting you in a conversation. You don't have to do a bunch of yelling and screaming and fighting and carrying on. You don't have to hold that inside. If they made you mad, let them know. Let them know. You made me mad when you do that. I had to go outside and calm down before I came over here to talk to you because that upset me so much. Get that stuff out and quit holding holding those grudges in. Start telling people what they're doing or what they did to hurt you. It is not up to you to try to make somebody apologize, but you need to get it off your chest and say, I just want you to know the reason that you and I are not friends anymore is because of A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. We've got to stop holding that stuff in. We have got to get that out because when you don't, you hold yourself hostage and that person has gone on with their life. They don't even know why you was tripping. Hey, Wendy, let people know when they've offended you. Let people know when you feel like they wronged, wronged you because sometimes you may have gotten the wrong understanding and if you never bring it up and you never talk about it, how will you ever know? How will you know if that person is just a you know what or if you got a bad understanding if you don't never open your mouth and say something. I am at the point, hey, Christia, I am at the point in my life that I'm not afraid to lose friends anymore because I understand now how to be a real friend and what a true friend is. So therefore, there's nothing my friends could say to me that would make me not be their friend. Literally, people that I call my friend, they can literally, now you're not going to disrespect me let me get that right. But if you come and talk to me, you don't ever have to worry about losing my friendship as long as you don't disrespect me and try to misuse me. But if I do something and I hurt you, or I upset you, or you don't like the way I said something, I want my friends to talk to me. Come and talk to me. Don't go talk to everybody else. Don't go complaining to everybody else. See, that's immaturity. You just wanting somebody on your side. We've got to stop doing that. None of us is getting any younger. And we're teaching our children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews how to handle conflict. Now, you over there and you talking about your best friend and I thought she was this and blah, blah, blah. And this. these kids are hearing everything you say. And then you're wondering why they're growing up and they're disrespecting adults. They listen to you all day long handle things wrong. We have got to be women enough, men enough to go up to whoever it is and say, you know what? I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or ugly, but the way you said that, I don't like that. And what did you mean by that? Get an understanding before you get a misunderstanding, you guys. 
That's why you have got to find an outlet for your emotion. Because some of us walk around with our feelings on our shoulder and something somebody may say to you, they don't even mean it that way. You're the one walking around with that ball of emotion. As soon as somebody says something to you, you just fly off the handle. We got to get that in check. And the one way to get it in check is to get a clear understanding. Talk to people. Let them know when they've done something that bothers you. And if they walk away, let people walk out of your life. I'm telling you, I am not afraid for my friends to walk out because if you leave me, you weren't supposed to stay with me. I've, I've come to that conclusion in my life that I trust God enough that he wouldn't put anything or anybody with me that is going to leave me. If their season is up, then I have to respect that. But if they're supposed to be there, they're going to be there through thick and thin. We're not going to have no falling out. We're going to talk about stuff. That's grown folk stuff. That's stuff for people our age, you guys. A lot of us are still acting like teenagers and early 20-year-olds, and we're in our 40s and 50s. We need to get our stuff together, you guys, so that we can get some control over our emotions. And when you get your emotions in check, you will stop doubting yourself because you're going to feel good. Hey, Johnny, you're going to feel good that you said something. You know, it's nothing like walking around with a misunderstanding. You start imagining all kinds of things. You know, I saw how they said this and blah, blah, blah. I didn't know she thought about me like this. You don't know what she thought. If you leave yourself to your emotions, you leave yourself to your own thinking when you could go to that person and say, you know what? Come here. Let me talk to you. What did you mean by when you said that? How are you really feeling about me? Are we not really friends? Are you upset with me about something? Once you get all of that out, you're going to feel better about yourself because at least you got a clear understanding and that's going to help boost your self-esteem. And then you're going to start trusting yourself a little bit more with your friends and how you deal with your friends. Because one thing I'll tell anybody, if I walk away from you, it wasn't meant for us to be friends because I tolerate a lot. I am very understanding about a lot of things, but as I've gotten older, I guess it's the Taurus in me. I let people know now. I let you know. So understand if you come to me, I'm going to keep it real with you. And you got to understand how real I'm going to keep it with you. And if you are truly my friend, you're not going to walk away. You're not going to walk away with an attitude because I'm a conversationalist. I believe I will talk to death. We'll talk all night until we get it worked out. Yeah, we'll talk on. That's right, Johnny. May 1. We will talk all night until we get it out because I'm that kind of person. I'm that kind of person. But we've got to stop holding these grudges because not only are you limiting yourself, you're teaching other people that are watching you how to act. And we shouldn't be doing that. Number seven, make peace with your inner critic. It's okay to check yourself and say, you know what? I could have done that better. You know what? Okay, man, I wish I hadn't have done it like that. Okay, next time I'm going to do that. If you're going to have an inner critic, check it. Don't let it get to the point where you talking down to yourself. If you did something and you know you could do it better, make notes about how you're going to do it better next time. You know, use that critic inside of you to say, you know what? You better than that. You could have really done better than that. And then use that to help you step your game up and move to the next level. And then number eight, like I said before, refrain from comparing yourself to other people. That is their lane. That is their lane. When you get that in your mind, that God wants to bless everybody, not just you, then you'll stop worrying about everybody else. You ain't that special. Stop worrying about everything else. You worry about keeping your stuff together, staying in your lane so you can get what you're supposed to get. You know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what they went through. You don't know how they prayed. You don't know what sacrifices they made to have what they have. But when you're on the outside looking in, it is too easy to say, you know, why them and not me? 
because that's not your portion, because that's not your blessing. And all you're doing is making yourself miserable. Until you learn to be able to be truly happy for other people, God is not going to bless you truly the way that you should be blessed because he knows when you've got that jealous spirit. He knows that when you get something, you're going to be bragging about it. You're going to be showing it off and he's not going to get the glory out of it. So you're tying God's hands by being jealous of other people. You have got to learn that God loves everybody. He don't just love you. So when somebody else gets blessed, you thank God for them and say, God, I see how you bless someone. So thank you for blessing them. I thank you for being that type of God. Don't sit up and say, well, God, you know, can you do the same thing for me? And why can't I have what they have? God is not trying to hear that. He is not a respecter of person, you guys. Now, let's talk about handling when we doubt others. First thing, stop expecting too much from people. People are people, you guys. Make people show you that they're trustworthy. Quit putting so much in a man's hand or a woman's hand. Quit putting your happiness in people's hands. Because a lot of times, and I'm guilty of putting my happiness in a man's hand, and then when he drops the ball, now you're doubting everybody. Now you're doubting every man. Now you're walking around talking about ain't no good men out here. That's a lie from the enemy, you guys. You put too much in that person's hand. You gave that person what you shouldn't have given them. Number one, your happiness, you never put your happiness in somebody else's hands. That was your fault. That was my fault. That's all on me. Because until you're happy with yourself, when you're happy with yourself, can't nobody take that away from you. I don't care what they do to you in a relationship. I don't care what they do in a friendship. I don't care what they say about you. When you truly love yourself and you have that joy inside of you, it's a limit to what people can do to upset you. Because number one, my all my happiness, I didn't put that on your back, boo, because you can't handle that. That's for me and God to get together. So a lot of times it's our own fault, you guys, because we expect too much from people. You know, I hear people talking about, you know, some of these mega preachers that are getting in trouble, stepping down, this, that, and the other. I said, why are we focused on them? Number one, they're human. Why are you putting your, your, your souls in their hands? That's not for you to do. Your soul belongs to God. They're just the messenger that's giving you the word. Stop expecting those people to be anything other than human. So a lot of times we put too much expectation on people. And then when that person lets you down, now you doubt everybody else that comes along. And then that trustworthy person, you don't doubt at them so much. They just say, forget it. You know, she expect me to do this. This is what I'm going to do. She don't want to trust me. Then I'm going to be untrustworthy. You can talk people out of treating you good. You can talk them out of it because of what's happened to you in your past. So you have got, that's why you got to stay by yourself until you get healed because if you don't get healed and you take that junk from your old relationship into your new you're going to be beating up somebody that didn't do nothing to you and a lot of us do that because we get lonely we get the pressure of being in relationships you know i've had people ask me karen why aren't you married again why aren't you in a relationship i said because i still got some healing to do I said, I'm learning to love myself, to enjoy myself. I said, I got peace within myself. I said, so when God does send somebody, I'm not going to be making them pay for what somebody else did. I'm not going to be not trusting them because of what the other people did. I'm not going to be suspicious of everything that they do like I don't deserve for somebody to treat me right. And that's what you put off. When you allow those things from your past, you're basically telling another person, well, dang, you don't feel like you worthy of me taking care of this for you and doing this because you always think people got a motive, you know, and when you do that, you turn people off. You turn men off when you don't when you don't allow them to be a man, not real men. Real men want to show you that they can take care of you. They want to show you that they got this, they handling this, handling that, and they want you to trust them. But until you've shaken off that old baggage from Joe Blow over there, old Slickster, 
that put you through all them games and all that trouble, until you drop all of that, you're never going to enjoy somebody treating you right and doing it for the right reason. And number two, this ties into it. Stop dealing with people based on the hurt from your past. Quit treating new people like the old people that hurt you. Old friends that used to lie on you. Old friends that, you know, backbite and talk about you. Everybody's not like that. You just need to be a better judge of friends. And you need to test out those friendships before you start telling everybody all of your business. Number three. Do more observing than talking. I'm learning when I get in a crowd, I learn how to be quiet. I learn how to be the silent one because I'm checking everybody's personality. I'm trying to see who the alpha dog is. I'm trying to see who the one is that's got to be seen, the attention seeker. I see who the narcissist is. They blame everything on everybody else. You know, you learn more when you stand back and watch people. Don't jump in always wanting to be the center of attention because you're going to surround yourself with a bunch of Judases because all you cared about was attention. You better learn to watch people, watch what they do. If they words don't line up with what they're doing, you got a right to doubt them. So that will teach you how to handle when you're doubting people. If they give you a reason to doubt them, don't ignore it. What's in a person will eventually come out. Let people show you their personality. Quit just assuming how people are. Oh, just because they're fun to be around, that does not make them a good friend in the long run. Number four, remember doubt is normal and response to change. You know, a lot of times we doubt change simply because it's something we've never gone through before. It's okay to be a little bit skeptical and kind of handle things with care or take it slow. Just like in relationships, you know, it's okay to be a little bit slow to move when you've been hurt in the past. Take your time. And anybody that's rushing you is not for you. If they are not for you, let them move on. Anybody that doesn't understand that, that because of your past, that's why it's important that you don't dwell in your past, but you have to be honest about your past. That way, the right guy, the right girl will know how to deal with you because they'll be like, okay, I'm going to take it a little bit slower with her because I know her ex and I know what he put her through. And I don't want her to feel like that's going to happen to her again. So you have to take your time with some things. So it's okay to be a little bit skeptical and to take your time, but don't doubt that it's going to work out just because that last one didn't. And the next thing says that doubt is often rooted in yourself. So a lot of times we have to look at ourselves to say, is this doubt even real? Why are we worried in the first place? You know, and there are some things you can do to kind of uproot the doubt. You know, if you're starting to feel that way, especially when it comes to relationships, the first thing, like I said before, is communicate. Have an open conversation with your partner and tell them what your doubts are. Tell them what your fears are. Tell them what you're worried about in the relationship. And y'all sit down and talk those things out. And if you need them to spend more time with you to make you feel more reassured, do that. Be honest about what you need from that other person. A lot of times we just assume people know what we need. No, you need to tell people what you need. If you need them to spend more time with you, if you need date nights, if you need just quiet time away from our friends, just me and you, if you know we need to go for walks and just walk and talk and exercise, tell people what you need. They are not mind readers and that'll uproot some of that doubt you've got to be willing to be honest and the second thing is you got to understand yourself acknowledge what you want and why you want it and understand that if you don't do this then you're always going to have doubt uh, in your behavior and in your relationships you got to get honest with yourself and the last thing that will help you when you're having a lot of self-doubt in your relationships or doubt in the relationship is seek help. You know, pray to God. You can talk to a therapist. You know, don't be afraid to let somebody know that you're suffering on the inside because sometimes those things are too much 
for another person to handle. And sometimes you need somebody, you know, that's a professional that's trained in dealing with those things that can tell you what exercises to do to help build your confidence, to help, you know, learn how to trust your partner and talk to your partner. Because all of us weren't taught how to communicate. You know, some of those things have to be taught to you because it wasn't modeled in front of you growing up. So let's start, start talking about how to stop doubting thoughts about your future. I know it's scary out here. It's too much going on. Sometimes it makes you wonder what's going to happen by the time I get 65. Will Medicare still be there? You know, what's going to happen within these next few years? You know, I know when COVID hit, when COVID hit, that was one of those things that really threw my doubt through the window, you know, because I had never been through that type of pandemic. And I pray that we never go through that again, not again in my lifetime, you know, because there were so many things up in the air, so many unknowns, so much bad news being just spouted out everywhere. And it made me doubt my future. And it even made me doubt God to some point because I couldn't understand how God would allow such a devastating thing to happen and so many people die and so many children get sick, this, that, and the other. So so it's normal to get afraid. It's normal to start doubting, but you don't want to stay there. You don't want to stay there. And the one thing I had to do, you guys, even with all of that going on, well, it with even all the uncertainty with stuff shutting down, businesses closing, you know, just all kinds of craziness, I had to make up my mind. I had to make up my mind because my mind was making me crazy. My mind was making me anxious. My mind was making me frustrated. So I had to get control and I had to command my mind to stop. I had to command it to stop watching all this stuff on TV, stop watching the news, stop listening to other people, get off Facebook because everybody was an expert on COVID and COVID vaccines and this, that, and the other. All of that stuff was making my mind just go all over the place. So I had to make up my mind that I was not going to receive all that stuff, that I was not going to worry about all that stuff and that I was going to trust in God that I was going to trust in his promises. And I, that just like he said in his word, all things, even that mess was going to work out for my good some kind of way. And so when I kept saying that to myself many times throughout the day, and then I reminded myself, God knows where I am. He knows what's going on right now. And he has plans for my life. That's what you do when you start doubting your future. Remind yourself to make up your mind. Who do you believe? Whose report are you going to believe? I chose to believe the report of the Lord because God hadn't failed me. God had taken me through so many things and, and got me to a point in my life I never thought I would be. So I had to draw on those things and say, God, you know what? I know you didn't bring me this far. For something like this to take me out. For something like this to end my life. And I just had to keep saying those things to myself over and over again. And I know there are things that come up in our life. It may not be a pandemic like that was. But some big stuff comes up sometimes. And you really have to remind yourself. That I have a choice. I'm either going to believe it. Or I'm going to believe God. Next, how to stop doubting, doubting God about your healing. Number one, we must first believe when we pray. You know, a lot of us pray and then we worry. We pray some more and then we worry. We pray some more. We ask people to pray for us. We ask the church to pray for us. But all the time we're worried. We're worried. We don't believe that God is a giver. We don't believe that God is a giver of life, that God can give you healing, that God is the same God yesterday, today, and he will be forever. So if he healed people back in the Bible days, why wouldn't he heal you? You have to ask yourself that. Do you believe God can heal you? And when you really don't believe that, you will listen to anybody and everybody. You will worry. You will get online. You'll Google everything and you'll stress yourself out. But God just wants us to trust him and just diligently seek him and ask God 
to help your unbelief. He knows there's going to be times where things are going to be overwhelming. And when they talk about a bad report about your health, that's the last thing that you want to hear, of course, because it's something that, that most of us don't know enough about to be educated on, to know how to handle it, to know how to minimize it. So when we hear those bad things that we don't want to hear, we begin to doubt and we begin to operate in unbelief. And you will receive what you believe. That's why it's so important, like I said before, that we are mindful of what we say, what we say. And then Romans 8 and 32 says that he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. So how shall he not how should he not give us all things? If he gave up his only begotten son to deliver us and to make sure that we had a connection with him, that we could go before him, and what would be the point of going before him if we didn't believe he could do what we asked him to do? So you have to make up your mind to stop doubting God regarding your healing. And the last thing is stop doubting God and how to about your future. You got to trust in the Lord and stop leaning to your own understanding. You know, what we understand when we're upset and in our emotions is a totally different understanding when we calm down. That's why it's so important not to lash out or try to have a conversation when you're upset or try to deal with a misunderstanding when you're upset. You need to take some time and calm down so that you'll have a cool head so that you can listen more than you talk. Because a lot of times we're too busy talking and we're missing everything that's being said. And then number two, draw closer to God. You know, we can hang out with God by reading his word, by praying, by meditating, by worship. We have to get an understanding for ourselves of God's word. We got to know God for ourselves. Number three, remember what God has already done. And that'll help you stop doubting about your future. Because a lot of us, 10 years from uh, from today, we were nothing like what we thought we were going to be today. We were We were not even halfway where we are today. And that was nothing but the grace of God that's guiding us this far. And then confess your unbelief. Don't be afraid to tell God, I just don't believe. I'm worried about my future. And then number five, look for things to be grateful for. There's always something God has done for you and you know you don't deserve it. Learn to be grateful for what God has done. He doesn't owe you anything. So be grateful for what he's already done. And practice waiting on God. Quit always rushing and doing and doing it in your own time and well, I don't feel like waiting. I'm going to go on and do it now. Try praying about it before you do. You'll find out you make better decisions. Number seven, learn who God is and learn God's character and learn of his unchanging character. Like I said before, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's hard to find any human that is the same yesterday, today, at any time that you meet them. So just understand God is not like us. He doesn't change. He's, if he's for you, he's He's for you. He's not going to switch up on you. He's not going to change. So you don't have to worry about being concerned as to if God is on your side. God is on your side. And why is doubt important? Doubt is important because it hinders your progress. It hinders your prayers. You know, you can literally be praying and be doubting at the same time and you'll hinder your prayers, whatever you're asking for. If you don't believe it, then you will not receive it. And sometimes we pray to God with wrong motives. Sometimes we got them sins we haven't confessed. Sometimes we're dishonoring a relationship, whether it's messing with somebody that you know already has somebody or somebody that's married and then you're going and praying to God, you got to get that stuff right. Or whether you're mistreating your family, your parents, you're being disrespectful to your spouse, this, that, and the other, you are hindering your own prayers. When you're out of line with what God says you should do and how you should treat people, you hinder your own prayers. 
Number four, when you have idols in your heart, when your stuff that you have and your image or, or the way people see you or where you work, you know, or the status that you have, when that's more important to you than God, it's going to, it's going to hinder your prayers. Lack of faith will hinder your prayers. And number six, this is the one we deal with the most is lack of forgiveness. God says, don't bring your offering to the altar if you got an issue with somebody. Go handle that issue, then come back and bring your offering to the altar. God don't like dirty hands. If you're going to come to God, you got to come to God with clean hands if you want God to truly hear you. Okay? And when you walk around in self-doubt, you will keep yourself from doing so many things that matter. You'll, you will uh, keep yourself from doing things that may be important, maybe something that only you can do. Because a lot of times we're afraid of rejection. And this will limit your dreams and your creativity. Okay? And then doubt can be a heavy part of your life. Doubt has a way of weighing you down. Doubt has a way of making you feel like you have to stay within a certain box in order to be safe. Living a safe life is not living a full life, you guys. You have got to be willing to take a chance somewhere. You got to be willing to trust somebody sometime. You got to be willing to open your heart to people and be compassionate and be open to love or you're not going to live a full life. Regardless of what somebody did to you in your past, that is your past. And just understand that life comes with, you know, it's, it comes with uh, chances. It comes with, you know, taking a chance and, and not knowing the outcome sometimes. But you have to be willing to at least try and see where things go and not be afraid all the time. And there are times when doubt is a good thing, you guys. This is the flip side of doubt. You know, doubt can help you be more open-minded. You know, not just take one person's word for something. Doubt can make you go do your own research sometimes. So that's a good thing. And and it also creates critical, critical thinking. You know, it makes you avoid just jumping into action about something or doing something out of emotion or impulse. You have to be sure of what you're doing. And sometimes you need to question things in order to get some clarity so you'll know exactly what you're about to get into. And then doubt is also sometimes a way of self-protection. That way, you know, when you start gaining wisdom, you don't take everything that somebody says as gospel. You don't believe everything that people bring to you. And that's self-preservation. That is protection. Because there are people out there that are just trying to manipulate you, that are just trying to get over on you. So sometimes doubt is good to make people prove themselves or to find out if what they're really saying is really the truth. So those are the instances when doubt can be a good thing. And my final thought, you guys, until we stop doubting ourselves and still until we start trusting ourselves, we will always limit ourselves and we'll always limit what God can do in our lives. So it's encouraging and I want to encourage you and I want you to start encouraging yourself to trust yourself and just remind yourself, I do make good decisions. I am smart. I am good enough. I am worthy. You know, talk to yourself in a positive way and remind yourself that whatever happens, this too shall pass. It's not there to stay always. So you make a mistake. Get up, dust yourself off. And you try again, but don't stop living being in a spirit of doubt. Don't stop living. Don't limit your life because of doubt. And let's say a quick prayer, you guys. Father God, we ask that you just continue to strengthen us. Father God, help us to be the kind of people that walk in confidence. Help us to find those things that if we are concerned, 
let us be mindful to get the answers. Don't just sit and be worried about things. Do what you can and pray about the rest. Father God, help us to be the kind of people that communicate when there's an issue and that we get the answers to our questions, Father God, until we're satisfied, Father God. Help us to be bold. Help us to be smart. Help us to make good decisions, Father God. And God, we will be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and amen. You guys, I love you. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next week. Have an amazing weekend. And don't stay out in the sun too long. Because <laughs> like me, the other weekend, I was like, oh, Lord, I was getting dizzy. So I had to get my act together and come inside. But anyway, love you guys. And I will see you next week. Bye.